Hello everyone, this is Gary Marr. This screencast is for two of my classes, for my Python 1 class and for my object-oriented programming class. Now it should serve two purposes. For the Python class, it's going to give you guys some help in designing your Python GUI applications. And for the object-oriented class, it should give you some idea how we would design a GUI application and how the code flows through it. Now this application will be available both classes uh, in Canvas, so you can also download it and run it for yourself. So let me talk a little bit about the application. This is actually an assignment for my 150 AB class. And what it is, is that the students are supposed to capture some information to print out a label for a coffee order. Most of us will go into Starbucks now, it's a pretty busy place. What they started doing is they'll take the information about your order and they'll print out a label and then that label will go on your cup when your order is finally complete. You can walk up then to the counter, grab your order, find your name on it, see what they made for you, and off you go. So it's basically just a simply just a simple label program. <clears throat> now it involves a couple of different files, uh, two of which I can show you, and a couple of which I'm just going to tell you about. The main application is in a program called Coffee Label App L .py. I just noticed it's got a typo in it, and also another file called Co Coffee Label Class. Now um, the other files I will be using are some Tinker support files. One is just all of Tinker for its basic uh, GUI and event handling. Another one is a special part of uh, the Tinker um, uh, module called Message Box. And the last one is to, port, is to support the Combo Box. And then that's in a module called TTL. It turns out that the Message Box and TTL modules are separate from what's normally used for TKinter. So I'm going to have to identify them off to the side here or in their own statements. The uh, class file, if I go over here, this is something that both classes have seen before. It's essentially a file that's got uh, a module that's got two classes in it. One is an exception class that inherits from exception called bad input. This actually won't be activated, but you'll see in the coffee class code where it would be if it, it came into play. It won't in this example. The other is a coffee class. It's got a constructor that accepts three parameters. The coffee name, its price and cost, and then here are the instance variables that are used with this class. It's got a instance method called print label, which is used by the application I'm going to demonstrate in a minute, and it's also got set and get methods for a public interface to practice this encapsulation for all of the properties that this class holds. And most of the properties just have to do with printing the label: coffee name, product ID. Let's see what else cost. Um, Prep time, we're not going to use that. Size, we will use. Price, we won't use. Add-ons, we won't use. Let's see. Uh, shelf life, we're not going to use. Shelf life, life, we're not going to use that also. So anyways, there's the class file. I've also imported that class file in my application. So just below the Tinker support, you'll see where I import the class file. I'm going to grab all of it. Um, what I did with this particular application is different than some of the examples covered in class. I decided rather than put the GUI inside its own class file, I was just going to put the GUI inside code for my Python application. So the application has one, two, I believe it's three, I guess it's only two. Uh, one, two, I'm sorry, and the third one's down here someplace. There's a third one here. I thought. No, it was only two, I'm sorry. There's a function called end app and there's a function called display level. End app simply... Um, Closes the application, gets rid of the window it's running from. Display app is actually what's going to give us a message box that displays the coffee label. And it's also going to print to the console window down here what that coffee label would look like. Now, I'm using PY Scripter. This is kind of my favorite IDE for Windows. It does not run in Apple or Linux. Um, there's other solutions for those that are just as good. I like this because it's all open. It's public domain. You can get it off, um, I think, GitHub or, or no, SourceForge. It's a freebie. It's got IntelliSense. It's got a lot of neat features. It's got a great debugger. And uh, I've used this a little bit. In fact, I'm pretty sure for my Python class, I did a video on this for you guys. So I'll let you kind of look at the code um, yourself. But I do want to talk about a couple of things here. Um, again, the methods are, excuse me, the functions should be fairly straightforward, I think. It's probably the actual construction of the, the, um, the GUI that's going to be a little bit different. Now, first thing I do is I'm going to instantiate a variable, an object variable called frame that's going to point to or be an object of type TK. This gives me my tkinter support. TK is actually in that tkinter module. It's a class that exists in there. 
From that, I'm going to specify a property for the label for the title that'll be on the top of the window. I'm going to create some string variables here that I'm going to use in the course of processing this solution. A lot of these are just used for either um, placeholder data or possibly um, field headers um, for the display that comes up. I'm going to have a couple labels, uh, well, more than a couple, but a label, and an entry um, widget for each piece of data. Okay, well, they're always going to be the same widgets, so the first one's going to be a label and an entry widget, which will capture the name of the person who the coffee is going to. I'm going to set the focus on that very first control. That's where it starts from. That's where the cursor will begin. I'm also going to have a label, uh, let's see, that is going to define, oh, let's see, I forget what this is going to do now. H2 must be the uh, coffee name. But coffee name is not something we're going to key in. We're going to pull coffee name from a combo box. We're going to do the same for the um, product ID and also the um, size of the coffee. Now, a little bit about this. Obviously, if I use a combo box for the type of coffee, I don't have to do a lot of validation to make sure they, they've, they've um, keyed in the wrong name for the coffee. It's a little simpler code that way. I've also used the same kind of strategy with the, the product ID, but then in thinking about it, this really is connected to this. So once I have this information, I probably should just build a list and look up from the list the appropriate product ID so I can display that, display that on the coffee. The last combo box I created could have been a radio button or uh, our option buttons instead, and that simply designates whether the size is going to be small, medium, or extra, small, medium, large, or extra large. That's being done from a combo box. That works, but I also could have used radio buttons or option buttons for that one. The other thing that's a little different about this particular application is I'm using a grid as opposed to packing everything to the left. So what will happen is you're going to see more of a display that's a square. It's going to have rows and columns instead of a wraparound like I did with a pack. Uh, that's something that um, has been, there's several different ways of positioning the data uh, on the GUI or positioning the widgets on the GUI. Grid is uh, kind of, I think, probably been stolen from the web developers and their tables they use to lay out web pages, but it also works for Python. And I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, let's see what else I have here. I've got a button here that'll display the label, both as a message box um, and also uh, in the console. And also I have a button that's simply going to end the application. At the bottom of this, from that frame object that I um, uh, pulled from the tkinter, I'm going to have a method called main loop. And what this basically does, it allows this application to listen for events. The events that I'm going to use, and these are defined a little differently than um, what you would see in some of the examples. They're going to be quick events on buttons, and you're also going to find that the events are categorized a little bit differently. What I tried to do for this particular example was use some code that was a little bit simpler to follow than some of the examples that are in the textbook or in some of my examples that I've been spreading around over time. So that kind of what it looks like so far, and if I run it, let's see if it comes up for us. Uh, i got to move it over here one second. I'm out of screen. There's my customer name next to the first prompt, which is you know, a customer name. And I'm going to put Gary M. Uh, it's going to be of type decaf. This is the part. I should probably tie this to this and make this read only as a label. That has not been done. That might be part of the refactoring process. I mean, the decaf should be A2, and it should let me select it. It should pick that up for me. So now that I've seen this application running, I kind of say, ah, oh, you know what, I might want to fix this. So I would go back and refactor to make the change. But for this one, it's fine for now. And let's say I want an extra large. Okay, so I'll select that. And if I hit the print button, what will happen is I get a pop-up dialog box that shows me essentially what this order consists of. And I can, ah, everything looks okay. And if I click OK, that next chunk of code is actually down here in the bottom of the screen. It's going to print out what would look like a label if I sent it to the printer. And from there, I would grab it off the printer, stick it on the side of the paper coffee cup, and the customer would be able to pick up their coffee on the counter after I finished, or my cust or my uh, worker finished making it. I'm going to exit the program from here. So I'm not sure I can go through this too much more than I have, at least the surface coverage of it. If you have any questions, please let me know. Email me, call me, whatever, and I can review this. Set the debugger on, walk through the code line by line. That would also be very helpful, I would believe. And again, the one change I would probably like to make is to take this combo box out, replace it with a label, 
and have it populated based on a change event, probably for this field. So whenever this field changes with a new coffee selection, it would automatically populate the uh, product ID. All right, well, I hope that helps. For the, the Python students, it gives them a, maybe a little simpler example of a way to build an app in Python. For my object-oriented students, it shows you how to connect your GUI with events that actually execute the logic necessary to have the program do what it's supposed to do. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you.